Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. I've got my saws all ready to go and I'm going to show you how to use panel saws. Something that you think belongs in history books actually has a spot in today's shop. I'm going to show you. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. A lot of folks would look at these and think, my goodness, what are you doing with hand saws? But I'm old enough to remember, back as a, a youngster, I would go to the job site with my father, who was a carpenter, and all the carpenters had their own hand saws. A lot of times on the job site, they may not have power available for a couple of weeks, and I remember the truck alive, arriving with the lumber. Back then it was just random length. And he would dump it on the, on the ground and they would flush up all of these two, uh, two by fours on one end, measure up both sides, chalk a line, and somebody would start with a handsaw and they would cross cut down through that long, wide stack of lumber and that would be their stud lengths. And like I said, everybody had handsaws. At the end of the day, they would touch them up so the next day they were ready to be used. Well, where does that find its place in today's shop? Number one, there's no dust, there's no danger, there's no noise, so that's a huge plus. And while most people are using power tools, and I'm not gonna give up my table saw, but I will tell you that a lot of times it's a heck of a lot easier if you can take the saw to the wood instead of the wood to the saw. What do I mean? You've got a long stick of lumber, you're by yourself, you're trying to maneuver it around a small shop. Instead of having to get that and get it over to the chop saw, to be able to take a handsaw, chop off those first couple of inches to get rid of any end checks, cut it roughly to length, and then you can maneuver it around the shop or even in, in breaking down plywood. Sometimes it's so much easier to be able to go in and just do that with a handsaw as opposed to trying to manhandle it around a table saw. So I've got two saws. I've got a rip saw and I've got a cross cut. And there were a lot more varieties than this, but for the limited amount of use that I need them for, I like these two. They work well. They're made by Lee Nielsen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you where I use them in my shop or how I use them. And you may just look at that and think, wow, that I really need to incorporate that in my shop. Okay, I've got a piece of birch. It's seven and a half inches wide. Yeah, it's a little over seven feet long. I could easily maneuver it here in my shop, but if you were in a tight quarters, this would be a little bit tough. So I need to process this, and I need a bench to do it on. So the first thing you're going to want is some kind of a saw bench. You could use horses, but I purpose I made this several years ago in our hand tool work, uh, workshop. It's a pine top. It's got a V-notch in there, which just makes it a little bit easier for holding smaller pieces, and you can cut this way with it supported on both sides high enough that I can easily use my knee to hold the wood down while I'm cross-cutting. Or if I've got a long rip, I can support the piece again with my knee and my forward hand and I can make my cut. Now I actually made this so it would fold up. I'll just show you really quick. Undo this. This piece folds down. Actually this one has to go first. Same idea. The base pieces are made out of birch because I need them to be strong. The top is made out of a piece of pine. I want it to be strong enough, but at the same time, I want it to be light enough to maneuver. So this one goes on the inside, this one goes on the outside, and that little toggle goes in there, and now the piece can stand up against the wall and doesn't take up much space. So in its working position, I'll just give you some dimensions, it measures 18 and 3 quarter inches high. The overall length is 44 inches and the top is 11 inches wide. And as I mentioned, the base or the feet are inside of the outside edges so that I'm not hitting them when I'm ripping along the side. Now there's a wide variety of saws and there, at least there was in the past. And if you look at mine, you're gonna notice that they're rather short, but that's okay because uh, I'll show you and I'm using them why I prefer that. So these are both approximately 24 inches long from the end of the blade to the end of the handle. I've got a cross cut that has, and that 12 stands for 12 teeth per inch. So if you were to take one inch, you should get 12 points in there. And this one is the rip, and that has seven points per inch. Same idea, one inch has seven teeth. 
and the rip teeth, if you haven't, don't understand what that looks like, operate like chisels. And the crosscut teeth operate like knives where they score both sides of the kerf and keep from splintering the wood. Now, I like, I like uh, that length just because I find it very convenient. If I was back 100 years ago building houses, I'd probably have a whole series of saws. But this is a good length for what I'm working for. I like the handle. You want it to be nice and comfortable. There's something about old saws that has, uh, oh, they're just inherently easy to use. Whereas some of the new ones with the plastic handles and the hardened teeth, I'm not a very, I'm not a fan of. But these ones made by Lee Nielsen a few years ago, I really like. So I'm going to hold it like that. It's a three finger grip. Index finger sits along here and that helps give you some stability in this direction. Comfortable grip. You don't need to squeeze it excessively tight. So my first object, or my first task is going to be to cut off the end to get rid of any end checks. So anytime you get a piece of lumber that's been dried, there's always going to be some, well I shouldn't say always, often there's going to be some end checks that you want to get rid of them first. Depending on the species, you may have to take off more or less, but I'm going to start to remove about an inch. So I'm just going to use my combination square to draw a line. I can actually do that by eye well enough, but in the beginning you may want to have a line. So, using the cross cut, I'm going to use my knee up on here, which you want to factor that into the height of your saw bench so that you can easily do this. I'm going to hold it with my hand, uh, my left hand. I'm going to use my thumb to help start the cut. And I'm going to be pressing the saw laterally against my thumb. Light, nice light grip. And I'm, I'm cutting at about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to get the saw started. Now, don't saw right here because you're going to dull that part of your saw. Try to use the entire blade. You don't have to go fast, just a nice steady stroke. And you want to have a nice line that starts from the tip of your saw, goes right up through your elbow into your shoulder. Makes it very comfortable. And as you get toward the end, and with a little piece like that, it doesn't matter, but if I was cutting a longer piece, it gets going to get to a point where the weight of the longer piece is going to cause it to break, and oftentimes it'll take a section right up along the side and ruin the, the full width of the piece on this side. So I'll reach around and just support this piece as I finish the cut. Just take it, try to break it, and if it doesn't break, then you know there's... There are no end checks in there, and now you've got a good end to work with. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Most folks would use a pencil here, but the pen seems to show up a little bit better on the camera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, if I wanted a piece that's 20 inches, I'm probably going to go about 20 and a quarter. This obviously is going to have to be cleaned up. Might not be perfectly square this way, so you got to allow for that. But remember, we're just trying to break this down. So with about an extra quarter of an inch, I'll draw my line and just repeat the process and cut this piece off. What you'll soon discover is you can usually saw the material a whole lot faster than you can plane. So this piece is seven and a half inches and let's assume I wanted something about six and three quarter. So you can either use your fingers like this or you can use any kind of a device but I would set that, draw a line along there like so. If you need to be more precise you could use a panel gauge, you could use a straight edge. If it's really long you could use a chalk line. Now I'm going to set this and I want it to be fairly well supported, so I don't want to be way out here. The closer in here I can get, the more secure it's going to be on the bench. I want to avoid cutting into my bench. I'm going to do the same grip, three finger open pistol. My index finger is running down the side to aid in the stability of the saw. It's a comfortably light grip. Uh, maybe, well actually uh, there's lots of thoughts of on what angle of attack you're actually going to use, meaning are you up like this, are you down like that, and I just do it into whatever it feels comfortable. But if you're starting anywhere in the 45 degree or maybe a little bit higher, 
Again, I'm going to use my thumb as a means of starting it, and I'm going to press my thumb against it. And you want to do this in a relaxed way. And by that I mean if you're too tight gripped and you're really forcing this, and that saw jumps on you, you may end up cutting into your thumb. But if you just take it easy, I'm going to keep the, uh, I'm going to saw on the inside of the line just so I can see the line a little bit better. I, I, like, I prefer to look over this side of the saw. And you can start on the pull stroke. And it's a fairly aggressive tooth, so it just may take a little bit, but not, not a lot of effort. Now you can also twist the saw a little bit left to right, depending on whether or not you're following the line. But ideally, the set, and I don't like a whole lot of set because a whole lot of set makes for a very wide kerf and it causes the saw to wiggle side to side. A narrower set is going to give you a tighter kerf and it's going to be a lot easier to keep your saw cut nice and straight. I'm dealing with dry woods. If you were working with a green construction lumber, then you're going to have to have a little more set. And another little tip, if you do get any kind of binding, you can take some plain wax and just do a squiggly line on both sides and that'll just help in getting that saw through the wood. I'm actually off a little bit. Again, use as much of the blade as you can without pulling it out through like this, which will make it awkward. Rather than trying to uh, saw it too fast and tiring yourself out, just find a pace that's comfortable. Now I started to drift off my line a little bit, so I just give a little bit of a twist like this, and I can bring that back around. When you get near the end, just slow down, support the piece. Again, you're just trying to prevent the waste from taking a chunk of your good wood with it. There you go. Now you can go with your planes and do the rest of the processing, but remember, you can usually and almost always remove wood faster with a saw than with a plane. Fundamentals of sawing. Learn them, get yourself a couple of good saws. I recommend a crosscut and a rip. It's just going to make the, those two processes easier by using a saw specifically made. You can do both with either saw, but the crosscut is going to be very slow at ripping, and the rip saw is going to be very coarse at crosscutting. So for the cost of a second saw, I think it's well worth it. Good luck. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.